two, but it is what it is. That's going to wrap it up here, our first series of the evening. We're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to find, you know, that 17th gear uh, that Dom Toretto always manages to find in the Fast and Furious movies. We're going to move on in to the elite tier of RSC, the Finbacks taking on the Great Whites. You know, this this really is just a fun story. Uh, uh, for those of you who may be a little bit newer to the league, uh, there's a reason that there's a shark attack and a whale defense. And so it's really fun to see these franchises going at it in the finals together. They, yeah, you, always, they, you always love those kind of like, you know, like those little storylines, like after you're around town for a while, if you will, to see stuff like this pop up. Uh, a lot of fun to see Shark Attack taking out whale defense, as you mentioned. Let's take a look at the bracket really quick um, before we hop on in to this actual matchup between the Finbacks and the Great Whites just to see the path that these two teams had to take. Also, congrats to Mikey G Fuel, who has been elected by you, chat, the Challenger Finals MVP. Again, Mikey G Fuel, the Challenger Finals MVP. We look at the run here that the Finbacks had to take. First, they're going up against the Cyclones to get a sweep there. They go all the way to five in the quarterfinals. Versus the slots, they take the fire and four. They find themselves here in the finals versus the Great Whites. Croc, why don't you run us through the run for the Great Whites? Yeah, the Great Whites doing a really good job. 3 owing in the wild card, and then that uh, reseed comes in when they get to the semifinals after taking down the Kodiaks 3-2. to 3-0 to zero in the semifinals against the number one seed. I believe that that is, that is the number one seed that's at the top of the wild card, right? DJ got it. Next, yeah. So that is a uh, that's a really solid story. They're coming off of beating a, what was supposed to be the toughest team on that lunar side of the bracket, and so they're going to be coming in ready to play some Rocket League. Uh, Finbacks, of course, doing their own thing over there. The reseeding a little bit more kind to them. Didn't have to go up against the number one seed, and you got to wonder if that's going to make them a little bit laid back. I uh, do believe that there was a little bit of a a little bit of a story going into the semifinals for one of these two teams as well. Well, let's look at the team stats here a little bit. You know, we're talking about the Finbacks coming in 35 and 29. Great Whites coming in 39 and 25. Uh, very close in goals for, but the goals against... That, I think, is what really tells the story here. Clearly, the Finbacks are the kind of team who are winning those close games. I think a lot of times when you're looking at very close teams in Rocket League, you've got those, you know, three to four, those one to two, those one goal differential games. And what separates some of those really good teams from those not quite so good teams is who actually is able to win those games. Plus one goal differential over the course of the season, uh, but managing to go plus six in terms of win-loss, I think really shows that the Finbacks are kind of one of those scrappy teams, and that's what I expect to see a lot of uh, from them going into this game versus a great Whites team who clearly does not have a problem getting scored on. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, though. Uh, I'm predicting the Sharks because they're my favorite animal. Uh, the stats, you know, the stats are the stats. They look good, but... They're just sharks. Sharks are so cool. It's so hard for me to go against the sharks. But now we've got the player stats up, and you can see why they are such a dangerous team. Yellow coming in, 60 games played, over a goal per game, and not only that, but a 37.85% shooting percentage. Yellow is definitely going to be the player to watch on the Great Whites here, coming from the shark attack. Hawk RL, the top player for games played on the Finbacks, coming in with 10 goals over a goal per game average. A little bit of a lower shooting percentage, but only by about 3.5%, and that is still impressive, over 30%. Three players coming in at under 30, and that's going to be Buck, Marcus, and Drupinson. Drupinson, a little, uh, little bit lower on the attacking side, but does have 29 saves, averaging over one save per game on that stat line. So if we see him in, we'll probably see him Play, take on a little bit more of that third man style, but the Shark Attack do look like they have their starting three, and the Finbacks look like they more have a starting two, and then two players that can rotate in, both looking pretty capable in their own right.
Again, not a whole lot different than what we said about our first matchup of the evening where there's four players on a roster for a reason. The Finbacks clearly one of those teams that adjust their lineup depending on what is going to be happening on the other side. We're just about ready to jump on into the matchup so you can see which teams are going to be playing which players here when we jump onto the pitch. Gotta highlight the 92 saves from Marcus. They got Yellow on the offensive end. They got Marcus on the defensive end playing that middle man position absolutely incredible what this team is set up to do buck hawk and rolls royce owner in for the finbacks fern marcus and yellow in on the side of the great white croctopus going with the sharks i'm going with the whales and croctopus bringing you the opening kickoff yellow is gonna go and mix it up with fern a little bit here in the midfield early double commit but the pressure still in favor hawk now trying to get that a little bit onto the other side uh, credited with the shot there nothing really going on too dangerous routine save from yellow sends it away touch back down to rolls royce fern's gonna beat him there marcus needs to beat hawk here this is dangerous could be a shooter but buck trying to reposition playing it a little bit safe here in the early games you don't see those overcommits come out too early in a series like this. Everybody's still a little bit cautious, feeling each other out. And, uh, I mean, not even uh, I really can tell what these teams are looking to do here. I don't really see a game plan from either team right now. A little bit of back and forth ball, seeing who's going to bite on what, who's going to be going for what aerials and from what angle. But a pretty solid opening start here. Buck puts one in, less than a minute gone. 409 remains in game number one. A good play here from Hawk. And then a touch that I don't think anybody on the field expected from Rolls Royce. Able to put it out into the center was Hawk RL. But cleaning it up, no one on the goal line to put it away. Or no one on the goal line to save it. Puts it away. Four minutes from in. You know, we kind of see one of those situations where it's like a one or one and a half on one. Uh, almost pushing into a two-on-one scenario where no one was really there defensively and Marcus was just kind of left to his own devices on the back wall and wasn't able to collect a save there. It's Rolls-Royce owner who's going to force Marcus not being able to make a save yet again and a quick two to zero lead here for the Finbacks. It's Hawk who throws it. It's Rolls-Royce who shoots it and finds the net yet again. Yeah, Hawk now with two assists coming in early on and two really good assists in my opinion putting it into the middle and but at the same time the defense here from the great whites really not great they got to shore it up a little bit i know they're the shark attack but they got to play a little bit of defense too the whale defense here has shown that they know how to go on the attack and 2-0 early is not a good look in the first game i don't think that the penny patrol situation is a normal thing for game one I don't think the Great Whites are going to be able to bring it back just as cleanly as they did, but still plenty of Rocket League here to definitely bring it back. Well, of course, we are seeing a very different pace of play uh, right now than we were seeing earlier. Uh, we're talking about the elite tier in RSC, the third highest tier that we have here. Only Master and Premier are higher. We're looking at basically everybody that is going to be playing on the Fish Night is going to be higher uh, than GC1. It's a very, very solid tier, uh, but sometimes it can be the land of inconsistency as well. You know, if, C if Champ 2 is going to be like the initial land of inconsistency, low OGC is the next land of inconsistency. We're going to see absolutely wild pop-off plays, and we're going to see things that make absolutely no sense for players that are at this level. And right now, the thing that's not making a whole lot of sense to the Great Whites is the fact they're down 2-0 to zero at halftime in Game 1. I don't know. It makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> no, just kidding. They, they've played pretty well, but double commits like that, they're making very um, awkward mistakes. I won't call them silly mistakes, but awkward mistakes on the defensive end. And uh, they've really got to hit the ball off of the wall a little bit better. They're struggling to hit the ball off of the wall. You're in a spot now at this tier. you got to be able to make not only contact, but good contact. Get that ball out over the head of your opponents. Clear that pressure away. They've done okay, which is why they're only down by two. But they've really got to shore it up a little bit here. Is going to create some pressure out of the corner. A bump on the net. And Marcus, oh no. You have got to hit those. The promised land was there. The gates were open. The usher was waving you in, but you tripped on your shoelaces and fell flat at the door. Hey, My I, goodness. I literally just said we're going to see some wacky outplays and we're going to see some equally wacky miscues. Uh, and yet here we are.
over <laughs> with a play like that. And it happened going the other way as well. There was another open net with the demo in the net as well to open things up as much as possible. And a goal still was not scored. We do still have two goals that have been scored so far in this series as Marcus can't catch up to that one. And the Finbacks grab a 3-0 lead. Yeah, and that ball looks like it's moving pretty slow, but that's a pretty quick moving ball off of the launch. Slows down a little bit on the way there and up a little bit off the bounce. Only a 39 mile an hour shot, but uh, really good placement in that top right corner. Tough for any defender to get to. And I think that's another issue that uh, you have in the elite tier right now. Fern with a really good shot. I thought Buck was going to get there and put that away. But a good shot gets across the nose, cuts the lead to two. But as yeah, I was man. saying, and once you get up into Elite, you got a lot more speed than these other tiers that uh, people are used to playing in. Elite's kind of that transitioning phase and speed, in my opinion. And so I think you rely on it a little bit too much. And you're going to see uh, people get caught out of position trying to rely on that speed. And that's how you're going to get those long booming shots to go in if you're the other team. Yellow in the corner trying to 50 this one with Buck back out towards midfield. Marcus is going to look for a pass. Hawk will deny it. Roll this one up the side while there's a bounce off the backboard. It's going to be right there for Yellow. It's stopped by Buck in front of the net, but they cannot make a repeat performance. Marcus is going to find the back of the net at 42 seconds left. We're back crock to just a one goal game. Yeah, really good play here from the Sharks. They're, they've started putting out a lot of pressure. I think they have realized how uncomfortable they've been in their defensive end. Uh, they haven't really fixed up the mistakes to my liking at least, but now they're playing much more in the offensive end. And if you're in the offensive end all the time, you don't have to worry about your defensive mistakes as much. It's showing that right now, 30 seconds remain. Let's see if they can put another one on the board, send us into overtime for game number one. Marcus will flick it over the top. It's an empty net just sitting there. Fern's gonna come in and clean this one up. And Crotopus, I feel like uh, the, the script writers got a little bit lazy here um, because they really just control A, control C, control V, game number one from our previous series uh, into the second series. You hate to see the script just being textbook like that, but at the same time, great comeback so far for the Great Whites. Uh, you know, it makes it so we can add the drama ourselves. They're trying to do True. us a favor. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, you hate to see that. What just an absolute miscommunication here. Buck, I believe, has that ball lined up all day. Hawk RL changing colors for a moment, going to the orange team, dimes up. Uh, I believe that was Marcus who got that. Open net, puts it in. Three seconds left in regulation now, and the ball is still in a dangerous area. Could be tied up. Let's Hot go! Ties it at zero. This is Rocket League. Oh man! <laughs> what a player! Rolls Royce owner getting it to the backboard, and Yellow can't quite catch up. But Hawk RL is right there with the read at zero seconds to tie things up here at four apiece. Yellow winning the ensuing kickoff here in overtime. We got overtime in game number one of our first series. Overtime in game number one of the second. We'll see if this one ends in an own goal as well as Buck is able to beat the defender. We're going to get this one on target and Buck with the solo play and the Finbacks hold on. So I'll tell you one thing though about the mental for the teams coming into this game. Uh, or coming into game number two. If you're the Finbacks, you're thinking... Whew, oh my god, that was so close. We almost lost it. Oh, oh. But if you're the great whites, you're thinking, man, guys, that was so close. We almost brought this game back. Let's go out and take game number two. And I do think the great whites are going to take that momentum into game number two. They played really well in the second half in the offensive side of the pitch. If they can crack down, get that pressure in there, they will come back and win game number two. But they have to be careful because if the fin backs catch them on, the, on their back fin, they're going to be in some trouble. Ah, uh, there we, you, we always try our hardest, you know, to bring those puns into the broadcast. And as a sea creature yourself, Croctopus, I'm glad that you're here on the other side of the broadcast to help bring these ocean creatures to life between the Finbacks and the Great Whites. A victory there for Finbacks in game number one on the back of Buck's hat trick. We went into game number two with a one to zero lead. Marcus here, a little awkward in the corner, does get a good first touch. 
dunked on by Hawk now. And another good pass out into the middle. Fern ready for this one. Doesn't overcommit on the wall side. Rolls Royce now has the control. Good challenge there from Marcus. Does ruin the flick opportunity, but the pressure is still building. And the Great Whites are on the back foot to start the first part of this game. 30 seconds gone. And the ball finally crosses over the midfield line. Now can they take the counterattack and make something with it? Marcus is rotating ball side. Not going to get a great touch. Actually not going to get a touch at all. Another awkward touch for Marcus to make. But does get it out center pretty well. A double commit comes down. No real great shot. Ball going back towards the great white half of the field. Burke knocking this one down to top with the pass. Looking for Buck who ends up with the back foot. Might be calculated, might not. Either way, doesn't matter because possession now in favor of the Great Whites. As it's knocked down in front, it's Marcus and Fern. A little bit of miscommunication. Hawk looking for the slow double tap, but this one's gonna go wide of the target. Not quite able to make that one happen. Go in the other direction. Fern with the 50 coming down. Here's Yellow, the drop down to Marcus who won't be there for the shot. Hawk trying to sauce up Fern. The 50 to Rolls Royce, the backboard buck the shot. The crossbar with the save. Man, and they threw everything they had, including uh, it seemed like they had a couple extra players coming in from reserve to try and get that ball behind the defense of the Shark Attack. Really good defensive display, which we have not come to expect from that team from game one. And they, if they can keep that up, they will look really good in this series. But I do think they have the edge on the attack. But Hawk RL looking for that flip reset. Marcus narrowly avoiding the own goal. Has the wherewithal to break a little bit there. Double commit in the corner could be dangerous, though. Fern needs to make a good touch. Not a great one to pass the Hawk RL. Sent away by Yellow, and now beat by Rolls-Royce owner. They still are under some unrelenting pressure. Fern, not a great touch as Hawk is there to be, put it back towards the center, and the ball finally finds its way into the blue half of the field. Marcus the bully now. Fern with an opportunity. Puts it off the corner. No double, so Marcus goes in for the shot. Just has to put it above the head of the defender. And yellow right into the car of Hawks. We'll be going back the other way. Rolls-Royce owner who's got control of the ball in the corner trying to beat Yellow, the offensive mastermind of this team, at least according to the stats. They look for a shot right here. Popping this one up and a goal above the net. Hawk will knock it down. Yellow in the corner yet again with the pass. Looking for Fern. Fern throwing this one to the backboard. Marcus just trying to catch up and Hawk is the one who's going to have the clear with two minutes left to go. Still tied up at zero piece. It's on target. Yellow just parks the orange Stocktane in front of the net to collect an easy save. That one falls in front of the net as well, but Hawk makes the read this time. A 1-0 lead for Finbax. Yeah, and it's hard to really blame the Sharks, uh, the, great, the Great Whites too much here. Uh, they did the best that they could with that defensive, or with that offensive pressure coming in from the whale defense. Hawk with a really good dunk on that sidewall, and just the assist king really going in to, from game number one, puts himself on the board, and now gets himself an assist here in game number two off the kickoff. But really playing well here for this whale defense team. They go up 2-0 with a little less than two minutes remaining. Well, we've got a 2-0 lead in favor of the Finbacks. They already have a 1-0 lead in the series. They're going to try to collect a second one here, try to hold off the attack of the Great Whites for as long as they can. If this one falls in front of the net. It's pinched out. Hawk is back. Buck with the respawn. Going to get dunked by Yellow. Coming up on offense, who has two saves to speak of as well. Fern, a little bit awkward here. Rolls Royce with the dish, looking for themselves. Has no boost to work with. Hawk tries to clean it up. They can't do it, but Buck! And a third goal for the Finbacks give them a three to zero lead. And the three person passing play has to happen, Croc, in order for that to work. It, you know, that was a, that, that was an interesting one for sure. Uh, they definitely needed that third man to commit. But I, it's, it's tough because every time you see that third man commit and score like that, especially in the replay as the other team, you're thinking, oh, we just need to hit it over the third man's head when he's committing. The issue right now is that the whale defense is not over committing their third man. They're just committing him. So you got to be careful. You're going to start trying to bang the ball over his head. He's going to be back and ready for that ball. But if you let him just creep up in the attack, he will make himself useful as is shown right there. Three to zero whale defense putting on an absolute clinic in the series so far. In the corner, rolling around. 60 seconds left to go here in game number two. The Elite Finals 
of the Rocket Sockar Confederation. Again, if you aren't just joining us, exclamation mark Discord in the chat if you have absolutely no idea what's happening. If you know what's happening, it's season 13. It's the Elite Finals. We still have quite a couple of finals left to go next week, so make sure you join us here at RSC Solar. Same time, same place, coming up next week. Just different casters. This one is pinched towards the target. Fern will cut this one off. Going up the back wall with 30 boosts, trying to make something happen just to get any sort of momentum crack to go in their favor. Yeah, and Fern's gonna try and create something here. Yellow on the back wall and Marcus commits. A little bit dangerous, but you are down by three with 20 seconds left. You gotta kind of just hope for a miracle there. You're gonna start banging the ball down the field. They need to start thinking about game number three now. Yellow is gonna try and make something fancy happen here. Good fake, but unfortunately for Yellow, Hawk was not fooled or Buck was not fooled. Whoever defended that really good defense there. Hawk misses the flip reset and they're gonna just let this ball touch and move on to game number three. Yeah, if I'm the Finbacks, I'm doing the same thing there. Get the ball on the ground. Make sure that one happens. Yellow jumping out of the lobby here. I'm imagining this is going to be a car change uh, and not a substitution, but we'll have to see ultimately what happens as we move on into the next game. But really, Croctos, we have to look at this stat line. You know, I said in the last matchup, sometimes, you know, the... the the scoreboard at the end of the game doesn't tell the entire story. I really feel like in this one it does. Finbacks outshoot Great Whites 10 to 1. One shot for the Great Whites. It was it was made by Marcus and saved by Buck. Yeah, sorry. I I brain farted there for a second. It does happen, believe it or not. Yeah, they really need to put the ball on the net a little bit more. Clearly, uh, if you're going to get out outshot 10 to 1 in Rocket League, you're going to lose. Uh, either that or, you're, or you've got like one of those mods that the content creators put on that just stop you from scoring, but you still get the shot on net, right? Uh, you got to... I, I thought the Great Whites would really do well in the offensive zone in Game 2, but they fizzled out. No, no midfield presence or to keep that pressure going. And they just kind of sat back and absorbed the pressure. They had some breakout opportunities, but they didn't really take advantage of them. A lot of double commits. Very, very, very many double commits for the side of the Great Whites on all parts of the field. Got to get those out of your gameplay. Got to get those rotations and positioning in check. To put that pressure back. Put the pedal to the metal and come out and win this game number three, or you are going to be struggling in this series. Yeah. Yeah, you really don't ever want to be in the position, especially in a best of seven, where you have to reverse sweep. If you're the Great Whites, you have to get that crucial victory here to at least get one back on the board. And Hawk is going to start things off in the wrong direction for the Great White fans as the Finback take the 1-0 to zero lead yet again. Yeah, not too much to comment on that. Uh, kickoffs happen. We can sit here and... Uh backseat game on the kickoffs all all we want but unfortunately that's just kind of the way the game is played sometimes uh really terrible for the great whites mental though starting off game number three a crucial game in the series to go down early now buck trying to create some more pressure early as well Gillo is trying to get that ball out of their own zone and it looks like it is going to be successful not for long as hawk is there to stop it in the corner bringing it to the center for buck not going to make it there as a defender challenges now Fern creating a little bit of pressure out of the corner. No shooter. Rolls-Royce has plenty of time. Gives the ball away. Yellow into the middle. Marcus up. Doesn't quite beat Buck, but does get a good 50. Ball's going to be bouncing around. And Fern now might have a chance. Yellow in the center. Bounces off the near side post. Centers out. Could have been shot, but Marcus, unfortunately, is already back on defense. And it's looked a little bit better for the Great Whites here in game number three, but still not great as yeah. Buck. Increases Speaking the lead things. by one. Speaking of things that are not great, getting scored on right in front of the net, not super great either. Fern gets bumped out of the net, Yellow gets stuck in a super awkward position. That's a tight angle shot to make. It's very, very difficult to get the ball moving the direction you needed to to score from that angle, but that's exactly what the Finbacks did. They're looking for their third victory in this series, already up two to zero, not only in the series, but also in this game. But Croc, we ultimately still have over 
three and a half minutes left to play. There's lots of time to come back in this series, but I think as you were saying in between games, Great Whites really need to just find second gear. They've been stuck in first the entire time, and they're not winning any races that way. Definitely not. They they looked a little bit better here in game three so far. I think the scoreline isn't really doing them as much justice as their gameplay is. But the whale defense, you know, we, we keep talking about how many mistakes the shark, the shark attack team is making. These great whites have been a little bit rusty, uh, stumbling here and there. The whale defense have been playing a super great game of Rocket League in games one and two. And also starting off really well here in game number three. Hawk RL is just Dunk Master Flex out here, dunking every ball he can. It's not even a 50-50 anymore for him. It's just an automatic dunk. And Rolls Royce, <coughs> excuse me, and Buck really doing a good job of following up. Um, but Hawk, I think, is really just kind of not dragging his teammates with him, but he's got both hands out. They're all holding hands and walking together, putting on a really good show. Pass from Rolls Royce owner in front of the net. It doesn't end up getting contained really. Hawk is going to read this one coming out of the opposite side off the back while Marcus keeping up this possession. Hawk cannot get back in time. Fern is the one who's going to score the goal here for the Great Whites who are finally on the board. The assist going to Marcus, but it was really Yellow who set up that play and Fern who completed it. 228 remaining. Let's see if the shark attack can bring this into high territory. Fern is going to make contact on the challenge there. Ball is going to be in favor of the whale defense creeping in onto the orange side. Ball sent back. Now Hawk RL in a really awkward position. If that ball's on net, it's probably a goal. But the second shooter, Marcus, denied by Hawk as he had time to recover. Bully play here. Fern able to dodge the bump. Doesn't dodge the ball. Makes good contact. Sent across by Hawk, looking for Rolls Royce on the opposite side. Buck now touching it in the middle. Popped up for Hawk. Hawk beats one, not the other. Sent back a little bit. Awkward. Great pass up to Buck, but read by Marcus. If Marcus is not there at that exact time, that is a goal. Really good play from the Great Whites here. And now Fern trying to get that ball out. Going back onto the whale defense side of things and really trying to put him on defense for once in this series. Rolls Royce getting bumped off the initial play, and Fern now going to throw this one. Everyone is up here on the side of the Great Whites, and that one is going to work out in their favor. With 94 seconds left on the clock, the Great Whites tie things up here at two apiece as Yellow dropped it straight down to Marcus, finding the hole in the defense right between the two of them, and just overall a fantastic play in transition to make that one happen. They win the ensuing kickoff as well. Marcus is going to try to score on Rolls Royce Warner. They will get the save. Yellow is right there and finally it's cleared by Hawk. Yeah, really good play. Really good underrated pass as well. A lot of people don't like that straight down anymore um, and it's because they don't really calculate it but that looked really calculated from Yellow's part. Straight down onto the hood of Marcus. Puts it in, ties it up. Now the whale defense Creeping in, into the zone, trying to get another one here. Good backboard defense, but Hawk is there, brings it out to Buck. Buck comes together with an orange player, sends it into the corner. Marcus now controls out to the left side. Yellow opts to leave it, wants to boost. So Hawk passes at center. A little bit of a double commit here from the whale defense. Could be a little bit of an easy clear for the orange side now. Not easy, but it is going in their favor. Out to the side, Yellow there, good 50, pops out to the center. Can Marcus put this down? He can, but not hard enough. Hawk, pretty routine save there. Credited with the epic save on that one. Now the Shark attack team is running back on their heels for defense again. We got 30 seconds left to go in a tied up bow game here as the Finbacks try to get themselves onto match point in this best of seven series with the Elite Finals here. Season number 13 of the Rocket Soccer Confederation. Rolls Royce gets the beat, using that boost to get back down to the ground. Wins a 50 there. It's Hawk with the cross. Rolls Royce will chase it into the corner. Yellow going to cut that one off. Pops it up into the air. Here comes Marcus, but here comes Hawk. A shot on target. Fern can't read it, but it's off the post. Drops down in front of the net, and we've cut overtime yet again in this series, Croctopus. And so far, the Finbacks are the ones who have taken the advantage of those opportunities. Can they do it again here in Game 3? We shall see. The Sharks, uh, the Great Whites, look a lot better. They don't look great, but they do look a lot better. Uh, whale defense has slipped up a little bit. 
Um, but they did do this in game one, came back and won it in the overtime after. Let's see if they'll do it in game three. If they do, looking really good with the sweep potential, and I do think that they will take game number four if they're able to take this game number three. Yibo clears it off the back wall, trying to just get that musty to work out in their favor. Ends up dropping it to Marcus. Flicks it past one. 50 with Rolls Royce. Owner's going to find Hawk on the opposite side of the pitch in the corner. Yibo's going to boom this one down. Be cut off by Rolls Royce. Teams fighting for this possession. A little bit of volleyball action back and forth as both teams try to find it. Byron tries to find the net. Hawk, the only one who can make the save. They get up there just in time to make said save with 60 seconds of overtime already elapsed. We are still stuck here at two apiece. The pressure now from the Great Whites in a great position to score a goal. A demo in front of the net is going to save the Finbacks for the moment. Balls up high and awkward. Marcus will be first one there. Puts it towards the net. Hawk puts it to the outside. Good bump by Yellow here. Could give the third man a chance to come in and take it. Fern opts to leave and reset the rotation. Probably a pretty smart one there. A lot of things going on on that near side wall. And you definitely don't want to let an easy one in in overtime. We're a minute 45 into overtime. And we see our first really good shot in the last couple of seconds. Or in the last uh, several seconds. Almost gets by one, but the defender able to clear to the outside. Well, defense now coming in. They have an opportunity past center. Buck! That will be on Sports Center, not top 10 later this evening. Stay tuned oh. for the post broadcast show. Oh my, that is just absolute pain for Buck. Has the open net to throw it down and cannot connect. And now the counterattack coming here, led by Marcus. Trying to throw it in front of the net as it'll come down waterfall style off of the backboard. Cut off by Marcus at midfield. Crosses up one. Now trying to be Buck on the side wall. The pinch works out in their favor. Fern with the read. Throws it off the corner again. There's a bump in the corner. This one off the post. Buck is right there in front of the net. Hawk a little bit awkward. Here comes Marcus. The banger on target is off of the post. Fern is going to be there as well. It's cleared by Buck. Trying to get this one behind Yellow, who will end up cutting this one off. Trying to slow it down off the wall. Hawk will take over. Shut on target again, saved by Marcus. Marcus now trying to take it out, gonna be beat by Rolls Royce owner here. Buck might have an opportunity, commits his third man, that could be open, Yellow can't steer it on target, Fern there, puts it in, and the Great Whites have their first taste of victory, and their first taste of the whale defense here in this finals. Great Whites had to make this victory stick if they wanted to have any choice uh, to come back in this series. Of course, a best of seven is quite a bit of time. Uh, but when you're already down two and you're looking to go down three, if you hit that third game down, very, very difficult to come back from. But at least get the series within one game at this point is massive for the Great Whites. Look at the shot totals as well. As Great Whites mostly controlled the offense, they put 16 shots on target. Target. They forced nine saves out of the Finbacks and score three goals with it in Crocs, but this really is the offense the Great Whites need to have in order to take down a team like the Finbacks. They have to keep throwing things on net. They have to keep making it work. That's how they won this game. That's how they could win any future games as well. Yeah, and then if you're the Finbacks, you just got to not miss the open net. True. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It was right there. How, like, it at least it two really was. That, that they one didn't was connect. Tough. That one was tough, but we've seen uh, we've seen Buck do some pretty incredible things throughout the rest of the series, so we're going to give him a pass on this one. Moving into game right. number four now. 2-1 series lead for the Whale Defense. Shark Attack, represented by the Great Whites here in the Elite Tier, bring back game number one to win in OT. Yellow's up on the first opportunity from the kickoff. Buck sends it away. Fern going to keep pressure here. Hawk credited with another save there. Fern coming to keep pressure into the center. Looking for Marcus. Can't get over the head of Rolls-Royce owner. Double commit could be dangerous for the whale defense. And now Buck is taking it back towards his own net. And Yellow can't quite steer it into the net. Looked really dangerous there. But crisis avoided. And Fern, oh man, you got to make contact on that one. Gets faked out a little bit. And Buck doing amazing things again. Taking it from coast to coast. Beats Yellow, the last defender, and also dodges Marcus a little bit there. Puts it up high under the crossbar. Really good play. 31 seconds down. 1-0 for the whale defense.
you know, I think that really that one just boils down to Buck just needs a defender in the net to be able to hit it. I mean, one person is right there. Hilo has pretty solid coverage of the net, but Buck is able to settle it down and use their mechanical skill to just hold on to that ball for as long as they need to to get the pop-up over the final defender to score that initial goal and make sure they are able to secure at least one. I think Buck probably wanting a defender to be in the net last game as well well, when they unfortunately missed the open one. They find it here. They get that one to zero lead. Looking for a second. It's a little bit awkward. Marcus trying to make this clear. A couple extra touches in the corner allows Rolls Royce to throw it in front of the net. The bounce off is going to be Buck who shoots it on target. Marcus and Yellow combine for the big save the other way. Rolls Royce gets the save right out in front of the net. Yeah, you know, they say adversity breeds greatness. And uh, I think that holds true for Rocket League. Uh, those open nets, man, they, you're either not thinking about, about them at all or you're overthinking it. Once you put even just a traffic cone of a player in net, you're at least thinking about it a little bit. Gets you that brain activation. Buck able to do it with Yellow in net. Really good play. And now they're playing well again here. Both teams playing pretty well. No one really has the upper hand ever since that first goal, but it does still hold a 1-0 lead for the Whale Defense team. The Finbacks doing a really good job of holding the Great Whites at bay. I like, I like that analogy. They're holding them in the bay, you know, just yeah. trying to throw in <laughs> as many references as we can. The thing is, Yellow looks for a double tap here, and again, only finds the crossbar, just getting denied docking privileges here. It's going to be Hawk who's going to take it to Yellow, and Yellow will get up and make the save. Marcus is clear, trying to get out to midfield. Rolls Royce is going to go up the side wall. A pass out to midfield, possible in front of the net. Yellow will find the clear. They'll connect only with Rolls Royce owner. It drops down off backboard. Marcus, a big clear, but cutting it off at midfield. Here comes Hawk to throw it off the backboard. Marcus there as well. Buck again drops it in front, and now Fern will take over offensively with zero boost, not a ton to work with. Big counterattack, and Buck can't find the net. Yeah, I think that just came down to not a lot of boost for a lot of players on the field there. Everyone looked like they were struggling. Everyone's turning to the outside of the field, looking for the corners, looking for that mid boost. Uh, it turns into a little bit of a sloppy play, but I still think a decent opportunity nonetheless. Good try by the wheel defense. Uh, now Hawk RL trying to keep the pressure alive. Going to try and read that one into the center. Burns should have beat there, but I think he might have been low on boost as well. Rolls Royce able to keep some pressure on the 50. But now here goes Yellow going back the other way. Can't read the dunk on Hawk RL. Hawk RL does the dunking, does not get dunked in this series. Now Marcus will be back in a little bit of an awkward position. Could lead to a double commit, but Yellow able to calmly control the ball. Back out to midfield with 90 seconds left to play. Here comes Rolls Royce. The right hand side with zero boost to work with. Marcus doesn't have any boost either. And we've seen this look a couple of different times here, Croc, where, like you mentioned, both teams stuck with not a whole lot of boost to work with. And I think that's really what's brought us to this stalemate that we have at the moment. It's one to zero. There's a minute left to play. Teams can't really, you know, make those high performance touches that they're used to at this tier because they just don't have the speed or the boost to get to the ball. You has just enough to make this one work however they'll use the last 43 boost in the tank for the celebration marcus the dish yellow the goal past buck and hawk showing that these creatures really can have the motion in the ocean regardless of the boost struggles going on able to get up to that ball throws a couple of spins in there to make it look nice and puts it home for the 1-1 high in regulation 45 remain and whale defense is on the attack now trying to clear it out here does get a pass out over to fern fern leaves it for yellow and now popped up awkwardly a demo in net rolls royce not going to be there first and the ball is put under him by marcus great shot to make it 2-0 or 2-1 excuse me for the great whites great car control here from marcus realizing that the only way that ball was going in to get the car upside down to hit it off the roof and to force it downwards underneath the opponent a perfect 
placement at this level. A 2-1 to one lead here for the Great Whites as they try to come back in this series again. Very similar to the script that we saw earlier this evening in the Challenger tier, uh, where we see one team go up 2-0 to zero initially, drop the next two games, and then win the next two games. So might we see game six again? Maybe we'll go all the way to seven. Who knows? I didn't write the script. I'm just reading it, and I am functionally illiterate, so it's going to be very difficult for me to figure out what's going to happen here, and hopefully it is for you as well. As Marcus buries the hatchet yet again, a second goal on three shots for Marcus, and the dagger in the coffin for this squad. Yeah, Marcus, really good shot there. Hawk does do he does get a backflip there, but I don't think he's saving that if, even if he does have the fast aerial. Really good reaction time. Doesn't quite get the car properly positioned, but man, that was a screamer from Marcus. Wins three to one. The Great White Silo, really good plays here. Leading the team as the MVP, 628 points with a cycle going to Yellow and Marcus both. And Buck playing a really good game. Makes up for that own goal, uh, or not the own goal, but the missed opportunity in the most recent game. But not enough to bring himself and the Finbacks over the Great White. You know, it's hard to... to win those games when you're getting outshot again we've mentioned this a couple times nine shots on target for the great whites five for the finbacks but more importantly yellow finding three saves dishing up the team as well getting the two assists on the two goals for marcus everything assisted from the great whites and especially at this level of play croctopus when you're getting those passing plays in when you're making sure those goals are assisted you are just so much more difficult to beat it's way harder to read those passing plays than it is to read those solo plays and it looks like the great whites might have found that formula before the finbacks have yeah we shall see you moving on now into game number five series tied up 2-2 this is not what we thought we would see after the finbacks came out and won a couple of games but it does make for exciting rocket league in the elite tier this is the finals i'm the croctopus casting with of course, Trippin, you all know and love, and Tuxedo Marks behind the scenes. We are underway, game number five. Five minutes on the clock, six players on the field, and Fern trying to switch the pressure from orange to blue. Buck says no, you're going to keep it on the orange half of the field. Dylan, nice touch outside, soft touch. Marcus does meet Buck there for the 50. Still able to get it over the head of Hawk. And Fern now next one into the middle, looking for a teammate. Yellow not able to put it on target, puts it high for Marcus. Marcus now off the back wall, pops high up. Awkward for Rolls Royce or owner, but able to get it out. Off the backboard, should not be a shooter available, but Marcus actually there. Really bold play as the third man. He does keep good pressure, could have been dangerous, but no punishment here yet. Now Yellow with a really good pass, and Buck sends that one away. Really good pressure from the Great Whites here in the opening moments of game number five. Yeah, they get solid performance there for those first couple of minutes, but they don't ultimately find a goal within the first 60 seconds, and that could be a critical mistake. Yellow trying to make sure it's not, and they're able to sauce up the entire defense. It's Yellow versus the entire team. Dishes out Buck, flicks it over the top of Hawk. Rolls Royce owner not able to get back in time. A 1-0 lead in favor of the Great Whites who are making the series comeback work right now that is just a really good flick uh not much more to say about that one you know the uh great whites yeah you, you hear about people you know you ever come face to face with a shark flick them in the nose and they'll go away they've taken all of that abuse they've gotten over the years and turned it back on turned it back on their opponents uh, clearly been working on the flicks here uh all three players i believe on the shark attack have really been favoring that sort of ground play Marcus a little bit of both. I think Marcus is probably the most aerial adept player on the shark attack. But Fern and Yellow definitely liking those flicks and cutting up the whale defense pretty commonly with their ground play. Buck on the left hand side trying to get the pass. Yellow with the dunk and Hawk right there in front of the play. Nobody able to really gain full control. Finally, it's Fern to go off the backboard. He gets a great pass over the top of Hawk, who knocks this one down. Rolls Royce trying to stop this one in front of the net, but they cannot get the momentum to shift the other way. And Fern is going to give the Great Whites a 2-0 lead. 
Yeah, a rough touch from Hawk here. It's not the greatest touch. Uh, it's not the worst touch he could have made either. Uh, I think it would have definitely been worse to let that ball hit the backboard. Uh, kind of tough to say. Fast moving play at this level. Do you expect him to hit that? Do you not expect him to hit that? All in all, uh, Yilla just made a really good read and a really good play. Fern comes in. Cleanup crew aisle seven puts in another one here for the grade whites. And now they're up 2-0 early in game number five. Looking to extend that series lead to 3-2 if the score holds. Here comes Yilla trying to beat this one. He gets this one thrown over the top. It's dunked out in front of the net. Fern though is going to be there. A great bump by Yilla, but they're not able to find Hawk who is able to collect the save as we cross halftime here in game number five of this series. The teams competing to get themselves onto match point to try to win the championship here in season 13 of the Rocket Suckhawk Confederation. And it's Yellow finding a third goal for the Great Whites on the path to their third win in this series as well. Yeah, I'm not going to call it for the series yet, but I think that this game is pretty much over. Whale defense looked pretty defeated. Uh, they played really well in their two losses that they had against Great White so far. They haven't played well here in game number five. They haven't played horrible. They just haven't played great. And they think that it's okay for them to take this game as a mental reset game. Buck gets a good one there that does open the opportunity for the comeback. It's not too late. One goal every minute is very, very doable in Rocket League. But they just look defeated. They don't look like the better team here in game number five. Yeah, and they have a lot of work to do as well. As you mentioned, sure, two goals in two minutes really doesn't sound like all that much. But the way the last two games have gotten, finding two goals in two minutes is certainly easier said than done. Looking a little bit slow, looking a little bit defeated, trying to get that momentum to shift the other direction. Thrown off the backboard, it's Rolls Royce owner. Gonna get the touch here. Hawk retreating back into their own corner. Has 100 boost to work with. Uses a little, grabs another 100, and then takes to the skies with 40 to go. Sees Buck on the other side, trying to get it past Fern. Will be there positioned perfectly defensively. Buck looking for Rolls Royce. The save there from Marcus. Fern back to Marcus. Back to Fern into the corner. 90 seconds through one. Marcus back for Buck though with the save. Yeah, the shark attack has really come in and made a good counterattack off of this, but the whale defense, the finbacks, they did a really good job after that goal of coming out with some pretty heavy pressure. They did look a little bit revitalized, a little bit more speed, a little bit more precision, and they need to keep that up. I think that they can come back and win this series if they go down 3-2, to two, but uh, they've, they've got their work cut out for them for sure as the Great Whites are now firing on all cylinders. 50 that midfield, 60 seconds. Hawk bounce shot is in for the Finbacks who are making the comeback right now. Down by just one goal with 60 seconds left to go. And Croc, you're pretty much right on time. You said they need to score a goal per minute. They score their first with about 60 seconds left to go and now have 53 left to pull off another one to tie this one up to three apiece. Yeah, and good on them for not giving up. Uh, you know, the game was like we said easily bring oh, oh my gosh okay i thought that was it right there almost the game, the game was easy to bring back but they were playing a little bit defeated after the easy goal that they got kind of gifted and then the goal that they just got now they've really got to keep that pressure and that speed up they got re a little revitalized after the first one let's see if the second one has the same effect Solid dunk there, 30 seconds and ticking right now as the Finbacks trying to get a third goal in and tie things up. Marcus pops it up into the air. Here comes Hawk on the 50 buck. A shot, opportunity, backboard is all they're going to find. Rolls Royce is going to get 50 by Yellow. It's cleared out by Fern. Yellow in the air, the redirect on target. That one is going to find home with eight seconds and two goals. The lead certainly looking like Great Whites will be the ones to find match point first. Yeah, really good attempt there from Hawk. I actually thought he had the save. And if he does get the save there, there are two members of the Great Whites that are committed. Really good counterattack opportunity. As that ball's going to be flying off of the backboard and the third man can't commit. Doesn't quite go the whale defense way. But I think that you can't hang your head too high. That was a bad goal to give up. Now you're hanging your head. Now instead of losing this game by one or by two off of a really close counterattack opportunity, you've now lost this game by three. And that's what you're going to go in thinking about next game. And the whale defense is a really good team. They definitely can, could have and could still win this series. They're absolutely capable of doing it. But they've got to make sure they stay out of their own heads after dropping this game by three. 
Yeah, it's certainly a GG go next moment, if you will, for the Finbacks as they drop game number six to the Great Whites. Or sorry, game number five to the Great Whites. And uh, they'll find themselves now trying to chase two. Great Whites needing one more in this series. Uh, Finbacks is still needing two in this series to claim that elite championship. But again, the shot totals really show a big disparity between the two squads as nine more come in from the Great Whites. They score on five of them as well. Six shots for the Finbacks, four of them saved, two of them go in. I like that the shooting percentage is so high in that those shots are on target. They're either getting saved or going in, but if that many of your shots are getting saved, uh, clearly there's something else you have to do. You gotta find a way to either clear the net or to place your shots a little more carefully. Yeah, I think their shots are placed okay. I think the, a lot of them are pretty soft. Uh, they're not... They're definitely not bangers. They're not yeah, oh no, I hit it with my pinky toe speed either. But at this at this level of play, you gotta have super good placement, super crazy speed, or a healthy mix of both. And I think they just need to add a little bit more pep into the show. So we'll head on into Utopia to see if the clock is going to strike midnight here for the Finbacks, and they will end up having to send themselves home with no championship to speak of can be cleared out here to midfield. Coming on the attack is Buck, only able to find Yellow's Dominus to throw this one towards the target. Hawk was gonna get a couple touches here. Bounced it over one, Rolls Royce owner just trying to bail out the team. Hawk will take it the other way, reading the touch off the ceiling, drops it down at midfield, not gonna find any teammates, however. Buck comes in a little bit late on the play. Rolls Royce with the continuation as it falls off the backboard. Down in front of the net, over the top of Yellow, but no shot, no goal. 4.15 to go. No goals quite yet. Not even no goals, no actual shots. A lot of good opportunities from both teams, but no one's been able to steer one even at the net. In the direction of it, maybe, but yeah, I haven't seen really good attacking play so far. Really good buildup, but it falls short once you get towards that goal line and goalie box area. Both teams need to shake it up a little bit, see if they can find a hole in the defense. One is going to go off of the crossbar. Touched by Buck coming down to Rolls Royce, looking for a sling on target. That one will go wide. The shot by Hawk going wide as well. The third shot coming in is actually saved by Yellow, who will steal 100 boost at midfield, trying to beat Buck as they run back on defense to get something out of the way. They're not quite able to do it. Here comes Fern, the 50 on Rolls Royce as it floats into the corner. 100 boost for Marcus to work with to try to beat Buck. They get the bounce shot over one. Hawk is going to get the read, coming down to Buck. Buck drops it down in front of the net. It's going to be Marcus coming in to make the heroic save to keep that one out of the net. The look was there. The goal was not. Marcus now coming in, does get the dunk, and it is straight in. Really good play from Marcus here, reads the play well. Uh, I really thought it, I, I, I say really great play. It's actually more of a little bit of an overcommit from Marcus that ends up going his way. He does read the play well, puts his car in the right position, gets it directly behind the ball on the challenge, and is rewarded for it. But if that goes poorly, that's probably a goal against for the Great West. Okay, sometimes that's all you want to see, right? If you do end up with one of those high-risk, high-reward sorts of plays, you just want to see the reward. That's exactly what Marcus was able to find on that play. Looking for another shot. Here is Marcus. He's going to go crossbar down and out. Tipped up to Buck, trying to beat three defenders. Gets it past two, goes for the ground pinch. It's going to be stopped, however, on the goal line in front of the net. Hawk knocking one down as well. Marcus versus Rolls-Royce. Looking for Buck in the range direct, and what a shot from Buck screaming across the middle of the pitch and right at halftime getting the equalizing goal really good play from buck here just super speedy up in the air puts it down very textbook aerial nothing fancy about it super clean super crisp 1-1 one, one, 233 left the play in game number six and we are underway with some more great whites pressure still coming in leaves the ball for firm for demo for his efforts now you off the back wall, up into the air. Marcus not quite able to get there. Leaves the ball for Fern. Fern down to Yellow. Yellow leaving the ball, clearing out the net. A pass into the middle. Marcus and the open net is there staring at him. Marcus stares back and slots the ball home with ease. 2-1, to 2.13 remains. 
yeah, you know, a little bit of a panic moment there, I think, you know, as Fern missed that initial shot, but the panic, I think, mostly was kind of on our side of the casting booth. When you see that open net and you just throw one off of the post, you get worried that a team isn't going to be able to complete the process. It was completed on that last goal. It's completed on this one as well, and it's Marcus collecting a hat trick, throwing this one down. Fern getting an assist. Marcus technically getting a goal steal. I don't know if it made any sort of difference on that play, but the end result is a three to one lead and Marcus is the one who has all three goals. Marcus does have all three goals. I didn't even realize that. The uh, hat trick for Marcus here early on in game number six. six, right? Yeah, six. And if they do win here, that will be the series four two for the Great Whites, uh, which would actually have my prediction hold true. And now a fourth one, the natural hat trick, all four goals, all in su succession, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the Finbacks did score the first goal, right? Yes. Yes, they yeah, did. So they Marcus opened up one to back, zero. Just four zero. Uh, four unanswered goals once the Finbacks scored the opening one. Hawk really not performing up to his normal expectations in this game, in my opinion. Uh, the 50s have been a little slow, a little lackluster. Uh, the speed just in general from the Finbacks has been a little bit slower. Uh, awkward contact with the ball. But the Great White, it's not all the Finbacks slipping. The Great Whites really have stepped it up, doing really well in the offensive zone. Uh, defensive zone still leaves a little bit to be desired, but they have really picked it up in the offensive zone. And that's why they've been able to come back in this series. Well, you know what they say, the reason we're up by four is so we can make the defensive miscues at least twice and not really have to worry all that much about it. That's why you give yourselves a three goal lead so you can mess up twice and not worry all that much. And there's one of those opportunities right here as Yellow is gonna demolish Rolls Royce owner and that's gonna take away a great shot opportunity for the Finbacks and the Great Whites now just has to hold on to three goals in 45 seconds. An incredibly difficult task to make happen, especially at this tier. We might be seeing Great Whites crowning themselves the champions of the elite tier in season 13. Could you imagine owning a Rolls Royce? No. I mean, absolutely totaled with some person <laughs> owning you at 80 miles an hour <laughs> and how mad you would be. Oh, I'd be furious. <laughs> Oh, uh, Marcus puts in his fifth of the game. My goodness, an absolute striker here. 693 points, doesn't need assists, doesn't need saves, just needs to put the ball in the back of the net. Really good play, carries the Great Whites here in game number six. Fat Lady hasn't quite come onto the stage, but she is warming up behind the scenes. You know, when we said coming into this game, uh, we're looking at the stat lines and we saw Marcus, a very solid offensive performer, but primarily uh, the defensive rock, the assisting rock, making sure that Yellow can get those dishes, can score those goals. But Marcus truly showing that they are completely capable of taking over a game themselves. A five to one victory is gonna be it here. And the Great Whites are gonna take it every single goal in that final game going to Marcus. The channel points being distributed yet again. We see 25,000 points for the Great Whites. Only 9,000 for the Finback. So we did have that one upset, Croc, a little bit earlier. The points going back the other way. And now, players, uh, you can get on into the chat right now. Jump on in there. Vote for you who you think is going to be the Elite Finals MVP, Croc. I don't know about you, man. I, I got to run with Marcus when you take over a game like that it's hard to pick any other player yeah I do think that uh Yellow and Fern may be a little bit more well-rounded but Marcus's striking ability his aerial ability uh, I did mention sometime earlier in the series Fern and Yellow really play well on the ground but Marcus is just so adept in the air very speedy very calculated with his touches I would have to agree 100 percent and give it to Marcus for this series what a phenomenal 
evening of action that we have had. Congrats again to the Great White for winning that championship. Both series this evening going all the way to six games. We saw the 4-1 to one upset earlier tonight uh, in the Challenger Finals, and we see the Great Whites taking out the Whale Defense franchise into the Finbacks in six games. Again, on the back of Marcus in that last game. And the chat right now is very, very close between Yellow and Marcus. Marcus, we're talking about a one goal difference. If you can hear us right now, tab back in to whatever browser you've got Twitch in. Find that poll and make sure you get your vote heard as ultimately it is up to the chat to pick that MVP. We need your votes to know exactly what happens. Uh, ultimately, Crocs, though, a great night of action. It's still not quite the end of the RSC season. We have more finals still to go next week. Yeah, and it's been a fun time, you know, uh, Trippin, we've been in the media committee together for a while. I believe this is our debut show together. It's been it an is. absolute pleasure getting to cast with you for the Challenger and Elite Finals. Let's uh, not make it another three or four seasons before we cast together. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed us at home. And just remember to thank Tuxedo Marks for putting on a great show for you guys as well. Yeah, Tuxedo, as always, the head of the media committee, relieving me of my duties finally this season. A big shout out to him uh, for making everything happen in the background. We appreciate that a ton. It has been uh, a wonderful season here uh, at RSC for me. It's probably going to end up being my last cast. There's a small chance you might hear my voice again yet this season, but if not, we'll see you next time. For Croctopus, for Tuxedo Marks, for everybody here at the Rocket Soccer Confederation, thank you very much for joining us this evening again come back on monday night starting at 9 30 eastern standard time more finals on the way as we ramp up into season number 14